This is the foundation and this is the pillar of your home. Depending on these three conversations, that is how you're going to execute your house rules, the respect and the love. Hello, hello, and welcome back to the Carla Eli Show. I'm your host, Carla Eli, and I'm here to guide you towards wisdom so that you may unlock a life of abundance by mastering the feminine balance. Please make sure to like and subscribe. It lets me know how I'm doing in the show. Also, be mindful that as time goes by, we will get better. I promise. Thank you so much. Without further ado, let's get into it. Here are three conversations you need to be having with your partner before you say yes. Ooh, this is so good. So good. I am going to recommend a book for you guys there. I think it's called 101 questions to ask before you get engaged. It's a really good book. It's very interesting. And that's what really inspired this video. I'll link it down below on the, in the description so you guys can see it if you're in this phase of your life. But there are three conversations you need to be having with your partner before you say yes. One of them being religion, the other one being finances, and the third one being how you are going to raise your children. Let's get into that. Ah! Number one, religion. Listen, there's going to be a lot of people who are going to think differently than me. If you are a faith-based woman like myself, I'm going to suggest for you to look for someone who has an open mind. I found it healthiest, I guess you could say, when I was with a man who was open-minded, hence my husband, hence why I married him. My first relationship, he was Catholic. My second relationship, he was Mormon. And now my third relationship, he didn't have a religion. He just knew that higher power existed, which I would much rather be with someone who is open-minded than someone who is like super strict in their faith. And here's why. See, my husband always told me, I am open to the idea of getting into Christianity. Uh, I was raised a Christian. I still have my concerns in regards to Christianity, but I don't want you to change. I want my children to be a replica of you. That's what he told me. So my husband told me, he's like, whatever you believe in, that's exactly what I want my kids to believe in. I want them to be a replica of you. And every time we get into an argument, every time we have to make a big decision and I tell him, you know what? I need to pray about it. I need to meditate on this. You know what he does? He lets me do it because he knows, he knows deep down that God is real because he knows that he is real, but he doesn't force me to stop believing in my faith or he doesn't force me into religion that I do not believe in. So those are one of the reasons why I suggest maybe going with someone who's a little bit more open-minded is a little bit better. And as long as they're okay with you practicing your own, you know, spirituality, because there needs to be unity within the home at the end of the day. And see, one of the things that I told my husband was, well, if you are not going to be a practicing Christian, then I need you to knock it in the way. Whenever I tell our kids, you know, in the Bible, it states, blah, blah, blah. You cannot be getting in the way and saying, well, I can't have you doing that. And we have that very thick boundary and he understands. And we're both committed to the cause. The cause being we want to raise very healthy, bright children, right? So that's on number one on religion. I've had had very awful experiences with Christian men in the past. So honestly, I was looking for someone like my husband that was open-minded and was okay with the way that I practice my own faith. Very, very crucial. Second conversation, finances. Who is going to be the one managing finances? And if you are going to be the one managing finances, what are the goals that you have? What is the lifestyle that you have? See, my husband and I, we have a financial advisor. So that's usually how we manage our finances. We allow him to do that. But most of the time, honestly, I don't want the responsibility of the finances. So I allow him to do it. But in the beginning stages of our relationship, he told me that he wanted me to manage the finances. But because it's too stressful for me, honestly, I decided to give that responsibility back to him. Yeah. So, but it's important, okay? Like, that's really when your love for money is tested. Because the way that my husband and I see it, it's like our money is ours. It's ours jointly, ours together. That doesn't mean that he can see and have access to all of my money, if you know what I'm trying to say. Um, I do have my separate bank account. We do. And he, he knows this, by the way. My husband is fully aware 
And he wants it in this way too, because he says, if something were to happen to me, I want to make sure that you're well taken care of. And he's confident and he's comfortable with that. I want to tell you guys so much in regards to our finances journey, but I can't because we're still in the midst of it. So for now, I'll leave it here. Once we've mastered that area in our relationship, then I'll be sharing tips with you guys in regards to finances. But this is really when you have to talk about finances. Who is a spender? I'm the spender. <laughs> I think it's pretty obvious. I'm the spender. He loves to save. Um, he's a good saver, but I'm the spender. <laughs> the one who loves to spend and he knows this he knows this yeah he knows this so it's really important for you to talk about the finances who likes to spend who likes to save where where can you accommodate both of yours where your needs are met your wants are met but also your financial goals are met honestly if you have no idea where to start your financial journey together as a couple i recommend for you to hire a financial advisor i will always recommend that get someone who is financially literate someone that you can trust word of mouth is always good i found my person through um a friend a friend of mine and i'm very very happy with my financial advisor but i recommend for you to do your own research and find a financial advisor he does charge a monthly fee but it's honestly so worth it because i've gotten a lot better with my finances i would say so i would recommend for you to contract a financial advisor to be the medium person to be the person who in who, who keeps you guys aligned with your financial goals. But really, finances equals lifestyle. So me and my husband, we want the same type of lifestyle. It would be completely different if I said, I want a glamorous life where I have Louis Vuitton this, and I have Gucci that, and I have a Porsche or whatever. But honestly, eh, that's nice, but that's not what's fulfilling for me. Other things fulfill me. And it's not to say that it's a bad aspiration, no. But we're we're both on the same on the same page when it comes to lifestyle and money, but we contracted a financial advisor for this. But you need to talk about finances before you get married, before you say yes, because it would be awful if I wanted a luxurious lifestyle and my husband wanted something like Yellowstone, where it's like a ranch and you're in a farm. It would be completely different, right? So you need to talk about the type of lifestyle that you want and the type of where you want to be financially so crucial for you to talk about it and analyze each other's bank statements together it, it just has to be talked about it needs to be talked about you need to be on the same team third conversation you need to have it's about the children how you're going to raise the children and this ties into work and life balance i guess you could say like what type of lifestyle you both want to live for example, right now, I am a content creator, I am a relationship coach, and I'm doing all of these things. But whenever my children come around, I'm definitely going to be taking pauses. Like, my life is going to be on hold for a little bit with her, not for a little bit, for a lot of it with my kids, because it's a no brainer. I want to spend all the time in the world of my children, like my, my new life starts. But in order to do that successfully, my husband needs to get to a financial place where he can afford all of us, right? And to give you perspective, right now we're in San Diego, <laughs> California. We're in San Diego, California. And to buy like an average looking house, you need to be making about 300K. Yeah, 300K. So he needs to be in that place financially for me to be able to step down. I mean, that's the goal. Life happens and you can't plan everything out. But you do need to talk about what that's going to look like once you have children and how you are going to raise children. Listen, my husband and I had a very important conversation. We both knew. We both knew. One person was going to step down while the other one reached their financial and career goals. See, my husband is so mature when he carries these out. He's, I'm, I'm so thankful. Because what he was telling me, he was like, yeah, in the beginning of our relationship, I want you to achieve all the plans and all the dreams that you have. He said, create your business, do what you need to do, accomplish all your dreams financially, do it all. I will step down and I will be in training and I will do all these things so that you can shine. But the moment that we have children, things need to reverse. And we both understood the game plan. And that was an agreement that we had before I said yes, before I told them that I wanted to get married to him. But he knew that in order for there to be 
emotional stability. And in order to keep a family strong, one person needs to focus on the career while the other person focuses on the house, on the home, on the children, on the family, on the backbone. And this is really important because it lets you see, is this something that I want to do? Is this something that I can commit to? It allows you to see, is this the type of lifestyle that I want? Can I commit to this person? Or else, if you do not talk about these things, it's going to be a mess. Your relationship is going to be a mess because at least now when you say yes, there's a plan, there's a goal, there's a purpose. You have goals with each other. And you are staying true to that. So whenever you have arguments, whenever you face tribulation, you stay true to the foundation, to the commitment that you had originally. And you come back and revisit and you tweak things. That's fine. We're human. It's normal to tweak the game plan. But you need to stay true to what you said in the beginning. It would be very unfair if either you or him decide to not commit to one of these three things that you first stated. That is why it's important to have these conversations, these three conversations in religion, finances, and the way that you are going to raise children. The reason why you need to have these three conversations is because it's going to set you up for success or for failure. This is the foundation and this is the pillar of your home. Depending on these three conversations, that is how you're going to execute your house rules, the respect and the love. So again, recap, the three conversations you need to have before you say yes, before you commit to someone, you need to talk about religion. Are you both okay with having a religion? What do you believe in? What does he believe in? Second conversation, finances. I cannot stress this. Please hire a financial advisor. Financially educate yourself. Find out who is a spender and who is a saver and where you can accommodate in the middle. Third conversation. How are you going to raise your children? Do you want children? How many do you want? And if so, who's going to stay in the house? Because can we agree that you could tell the difference between a child who has a parent at home and a child who does not have a parent at home? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you need to have those conversations before you commit. Before, not after. And with that being said, ladies, be wise.